This segment is being brought to you by Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Join us in preserving and protecting Tennessee's wildlife. All right, welcome back, everyone. You can call us here. We're opening up the phone lines at 615-737-7767. We've got some callers that want to talk to us about preferably turkey hunting. Okay, let's talk about that. Till those calls start coming in, though, Jerry, let's give some kids some pointers on calling, okay? okay. Because we've touched a little bit about you can call too much. Oh, yeah. And, and when the gobbler gobbles and he cuts you off, stop. But what's a great call that you think that we could maybe teach some youngsters tonight? Let's just kind of walk it, walk it up the okay. scale on based on importance. Okay. The the most important call to learn is just a plain yelp. Just can be done on any of dozens of calling. That's devices, right. But That's it. Just that. That is that is the come here call of the hen. I That's mean, right. It's, it, it's how the group stays together. If they get separated, you'll hear one yelp, or you'll hear that old that old boss hen yelp to get the group to follow her. Now, um, if if you don't learn anything else, you'll call turkeys with that, and you'll and, be successful. Yeah, and if you don't master, all, you know, the, the all the calls that we have out in here on the table, you can start. With a push button call, it's the simplest thing That's out right. there. You just that this is one, awesome. This one clips to the barrel of your shotgun. Got the string on it so that and it clucks, which is the next call we're going to. That's right. Which is just that simple little and then the purr. That's awesome. So one little call like that. Give you three different calls right there. And you're on your way. The And, and the cluck and the purr are the second level. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, you, you get them coming your way with a yelp, and then the cluck and purr can be used uh, as a finishing call. Kind of call. set the mood. It yeah, doesn't, it, it just does. says I'm over here. That's right. Uh, if you want to know the meanings of the two different sounds, a cluck says look. Mm-hmm. And a purr says, my space. That's right. They use the purr as a mild warning. To they feed, and while they're feeding, mm -hmm. they're doing that purr to get the other hens, leave spread me alone. Out, spread out of Give my Give me area. a three-foot circumference here. I'm taking care of these insects. Right. And that's and, how they do it. Yep. And now you'd be surprised what the fourth call is. All right. Well, Scratching in the leaves. I do that. That works, brother. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's 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 not a product. It's not a product. It's not anything that's sold commercially. Although I suppose somebody's got something. Somebody out. does. But but you would be surprised how effective, especially when you've got that bird that's already cut you off and he's starting your way. You'd be surprised how many times just scratching in the leaves. And all you got to do, if you ever watched a turkey scra scratch leaves, that's the sound you're trying to Im that's right. Im mimic. It's. That's what they do. Because what you're seeing, you, sometimes you get that double one. What happens is they'll pull one leg, then the other. That's right. So you get ch ch. So match that pattern a little bit. There's been times when I've been right on top of a of a roost, never called to the gobbler on the roost, and all I did was scratching the leaves. And he knew exactly and where you were. He lit up and gobbled, oh, yeah. and I said. You don't need anything else. Don't need anything else. He's cut that call off, so he knows this is where he wants to be. Saturday morning, it's going to be a little cool. Yep. Uh, what would Jerry Peterson, how would he deal with it? And if he had a youngster with him, how was he going to deal with that? Well, I would probably take take my, my youngster to a, a high spot so we could listen to turkeys. Use that opportunity, whether they're experienced or not, to kind of lay out where the turkeys are on the property to to the to the hunters and say now that's a good one over there listen over here this one is this one is more demanding mm -hmm. he's he's cutting this other bird off mm -hmm. he sounds like like um, what he's telling me is he sounds like he's got the hens and he's telling the other one to, to lay off a lot of people would be tempted to go to that one that shuts up the other birds yeah I go to the one that's, that's trying to gobble. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Because he's the one that's lonely. Yep. And, and and basically that's what we need to tell the kids is is this is their mating season. Yep. This is the beginning of their mating season, so you need to use that to your advantage. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and the soft calls, I like soft calling the purrs, uh, the clucks, softly done softly. Yep. Um, and, and I tell you something else we want to touch on is is. Uh, this time of year, I might use two decoys, but they're going to be hen decoys. Yep. And I'll tell you what I use, Jerry, and, and a lot of people think I might be wrong, but it's it's worked for me. I use one feeding and one alert. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time when you look at turkeys in the woods, there'll be two or three feeding, but one of them's One's watching. Always looking. One's always watching for uh, yep. some kind of danger. Yep. Uh, so there, one's always watching. Then when it puts its head down, another one will pop its head up. So exactly. I kind of mimic nature in doing it, but I, I rarely ever use over two decoys this time of year. No, uh, and, 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 and uh, you know. And I don't time, use a gobbler decoy yeah, this time of say, year either. It's a good time to discuss what's popular in in the in the media mm -hmm. but uh and that is the use of gobbler decoys mm -hmm. and 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 actually using gobble calls we didn't we didn't yeah, get to we that didn't get level. to that but i would not recommend either one i wouldn't either uh early in the early season um and the and part of the reason is that especially a gobbler decoy will probably back off more more gobblers then, uh, you know, then they'll actually attract. Well, they've been fighting a little bit already, hadn't they, Jerry? That's the key right there. They have been, they are fighting a bunch. They're fighting a bunch, and, and I don't think one's looking for a fight. Some of them have been put in their place. Yes. And, 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 and just like the birds I was telling you about out in the back of the house, that big bird, he's a four-year-old four bird, and he's got hooks that big on him. That's the bird I, you know, I I, I would like want. to get, but if you if you go out there with the with the decoys, those three two and a half year old birds are liable to be. They're you know, going to be the ones coming in. Now, that they're all three are fine trophies, but what I'm saying is they may also just look at that decoy and go, uh huh. That's right. And pack up and head the other way. So, so uh, I try to stay with the things that work the best. Mm -hmm. And the things that work the best are sounding like hens, using hen decoys, and staying away from the aggressive stuff. There's a lot of there's a lot of people out there in the industry that talk about running and gunning. Yeah. And I, I'll tell you the, the reality of that here in Tennessee, and th and that is that most places you hunt are like 35 acres. Yeah. <laughs> you true. can run right through 35 acres in, quick. in 10 minutes. Yes. <laughs> you know? Pretty quick. You're so, right. So uh, if you want to continue to hunt a piece of property all through the season, not just opening weekend, but all through the season, if you take a, a, a more gentle approach to how you, you go to those turkeys and don't go in, and, you know, I see people make the mistake over and over again of going right into those roosts and busting those birds while they're still in the roost. And I'm going to tell you, if you want the quickest way to put your turkeys on the neighbors where you can't hunt them, keep doing that. You, you do that more than once and you're done. You're done. Your whole that's season is done. That's right. So so take it a little bit easier than the running and gunning stuff that you see. Jerry, we got some callers okay. on here. Let's Good go deal. to line one. Is who? Nathan, Nathan, how can we help you tonight? Nathan? Hmm? Hello? All right, who's on two? Jack, Jack, how can we help you tonight? Uh, yeah, I got swim bait. I had a, uh, on, um, it's on fishing. Uh, I slid it open to take some of the weight out of it. Uh huh. And I'm needing to put it back together so I can fish with it to uh, see if it was too heavy. Uh, when I swam it through the water, uh, -huh. uh it was tail and everything, it worked real good. But uh, I had to slice it open at the bottom to take the weight out. I just wonder if it's something that I could get uh, to um, blend, blend that back together so it would be like it was when I got it. Is it, is it plastic? Yes. Uh, like the real soft plastic, like a worm? 
Yeah. You can just take a uh, uh, super glue, put you three or four drops in there, and put it together. Thirty seconds later, it's it's bonded. Okay. Okay. There, I got some of that. All right. Thank you for the call. We appreciate you. All right. Thank you. All right. We got Steve. Steve, how can we help you tonight? Hey, you and Jerry, this is Steve over Specialty Arms. Yes, sir. Hey, Steve. We're fine, buddy. <laughs> We're doing fine, Steve. Uh, got a question. I just got a new piece of property, and it is covered up in birds. Okay. But it's also covered up in coyotes. Uh, yeah. And I am finding, after doing just a little preliminary scouting this past week, that uh, these birds trying to gobble it on the roost, coyote house immediately. They're shut up. Shut up. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they're not looking to be a lunch or a breakfast. Um, what can we suggest? I suggested. Boy, there's one time I will use a decoy. Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, it, it last, in fact, last year on my own farm, uh, opening opening day, I killed three, three coyotes, and that's by you know by just going in with the full intention that I you know that. I was not going to be turkey hunting until after, until about eight or eight or so o'clock in the morning. I was after that, breaking that routine with the coyotes. They'll they they'll sneak up on that roost. They will. And they'll wait for those birds to fly down. And they're on them. So I set my decoys up. I waited for the birds to fly down and walk off. And uh, then I started calling. And I mean, as soon as I called, first coyote gone and that's what he's going to have to do isn't yep. it? It's, you're going to have to do it steve and you're not going to run your birds off i think that they'll stay there yep. uh, but you got to get two or three of those coyotes off that property yep and you got to make them a little woods wise uh that they won't be doing that anymore yeah go go ahead and let the birds you know the, the birds will you know after they've been hunted by those coyotes at the at the roost they're going to move out pretty quick let that's go. kind of what I figured. Just let that first week of season be coat. That's yep, it. That's, that's, that's it. That's what I did, and it cured my problem after that because there, the 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 last call up, uh, I had five of them come at me. I was only able to get one. Yeah. So, but after that, no more problems. No more first. problems. But that's kind of what I figured. I just wanted to test the expert. Thank you, Steve. We appreciate right. you, brother. Good to hear from you. Good okay. to hear from Specialty Arms over there. <laughs> All right. Great, great job. We appreciate that. Uh, we've got to do our product of the week. And what I was going to show you tonight, uh, it's, of course, is tip of the week, I'm sorry, from Davidson County Farmers Co-op over there off of Dickerson Road. Let me tell you something. Those guys and gals have got it done right over there. That is a huge, huge store, and you need stuff for them right now to start your spring season. Hey, this week's tip we want to give you is that I just picked up, Jerry, and you and I were talking about this. I just picked up some Winchester shells um, right there on the um, – and these are the Long Beard XRs, extra mm, yep, range, yep. okay? Now, these are my grandsons. We got him shooting a 12 gauge now, and these are three inch loads. They travel at 1,200 feet per second. So, Fast. now let me tell you something. There's some that are out here that are faster, like 1,350. I saw one that was 1,480. Uh, but I really like the 1,200. Yep. The reason is, is that I look at the ounce load. You and I both look at the First ounce load. Uh, you can get up to two and a quarter ounces. You can get two ounces, one and seven eighths. This is one and three quarter ounce load. That's enough. It's about right. It's actually. about right. Yep. Uh, it does a really good pattern, Jerry. It, mm -hmm. it, when it's shot, and these are number fours, mm -hmm. but when it's shot, if you think about it, Mathematically, if you're putting two and a quarter ounces or two ounces of shot in there, they're bouncing off of one another a lot. Yep. The one and three quarter cuts out on that and gives you more accuracy. That's exactly the, the, the whole deal. Winchester changed my life about 15 years ago when they came out with the forerunner of this, of this uh, particular shell. And that's when they went from making lighter payloads, buffeted payloads, copper, you know, copper clad, mm -hmm. you know, round, straight flying, and the, and we couldn't really believe him when he said, "Go down in size, much smaller than you think you should on a on a shotgun shell." I shoot number sixes. That's right. And and, and I mean, you talk about extra range. 
They, they yeah. have it. They, they have, have it. it. They have it. So. Well, we hope that tip helps you out, ladies and gentlemen. It's just uh, uh, we, we use that tip also. My grandson shot his pattern, first shot, 35 pellets at 30 yards was in the head. Yes, sir. So a great, great job there. Uh, so uh, check them out. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with a cooking that I think you're going to like. It's more Easter, Easter kind of thing. Check it out when you come back. More Southern Woods and Waters.